I like the first watch. It was quite experience for me. I was working on the container ship and the container ship always have the quick life. So 10 ports in one and a half months or more and uh, a lot of knowledge which are using in future. That uh, during uh, unmining engine room, the incinerator was in work. So it's created small fire from the main hatch. So for example, uh, we are managing company and we want to try to apply for new tender for some other vessels. For example, we want to find more uh, offshore vessels. But to apply for the offshore vessels, you need, or for new tanker vessels, you need to pass TMSA or OVMSA. TMSA is uh, tanker management self-assessment who is covered by Shell and uh, OVMSA, it's Offshore Vessel Management Self-Assessment, also covered by Shell. So office are preparing, also, office also have the all audits, DNV, classification society and flex uh, uh, inspections. So the office preparing themselves and preparing the vessel for the audits. Additionally, for example, Mac is managing director. He also monitoring the right ship and whatever he don't like, he will directly will inform the leaders of the fleets and uh, including my department, he will speak to LPCQ. The partner will say, okay, our right ship are like little bit less and there was want improvement that we will apply for new vessels. Hi guys, Captain Yevgen here with you on Estomar channel and we have a guest, Vlad, his position is LPSQ, Loss Prevention, Safety and Quality. Hi Vlad, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, I'm... Thank you very much, you, find, you found some time for us. And uh, what's the difference actually between LPSQ and uh, normally we get used to uh, like HEC officer position? Well, let's divide and give more explanation about abbreviation. So LPCQ, Loss Prevention, Safety and Quality, and I am LPCQ officer. And what is HEC mostly is the same. It's health, safety, environmental, uh, I would say, department in many companies. But in general, it depends on the company structure. So, for example, my previous my colleague and he before worked in different company as HEC superintendent. And the difference was only in structure of the company. So in his department, he was also preparing, for example, alcohol and narcotics tests for the vessel. He was uh, continuously to be in touch and uh, chatting, emailing with the vessel. So he was like a marine superintendent. And uh, in my company, I am mostly making deals with uh, marine accidents and uh, preparation of uh, MLC, uh, MLC, ISPS, and ISM internal external audits. Oh, external audits and the company internal audits. So mostly it depends on the company structure. Some company have uh, HSSQ officers or HSS officers, so uh, safety security officers. Uh, so it mostly depends on the structure of the company, but in general, they are mostly making deals with marine accidents. Nice, nice. And how many vessels uh, you are in charge for? In my company, in my department in Hamburg, uh, we have under the management 38 vessels and uh, LPCQ department not subdivided by fleets. Uh, for example, we have three fleets, one of them container ships, offshore and mix. And uh, usual MSIs, marine superintendents and TSIs, technical superintendents, they subdivided in the fleets uh, on the basic of their experience, like captains of chief engineers. In my department, I'm uh, we have all vessels in our our management. Uh, I mean that uh, any accident in the company in our management will be investigated by my department. Offshore uh, uh, container ship or uh, usual mix. So in mix we have uh, asphalt tanker, uh, chemical tanker, LNG tanker, uh, some small different containers slash roro. So it's in my actual fleet 38 mixed vessels. Okay, Vlad, actually you worked as a third officer on LPG tanker and LPG tankers are well-paid uh, job. So why did you decide to, let's say, give up your sea career and uh, choose the, let's say, shore job? If to be honest, it was not so easy decision, but on the basis of, you know, of so many experienced captains and their advices, they, to be honest, are... Uh, already 
so long time in the Siemens life and uh, if they had choice before to change shore, uh, sea life to the shore, so they would try. And uh, I heard so many stories and uh, that you are not able to go to shore uh, until you will become captain or chief officer or chief engineer, second engineer. And uh, the second, uh, I would say, not a recommendation, but uh, good kick was in Instagram. It's your page uh, that you are motivating the seafarers to go, to change their life to go ashore. Second, there are so many, I would say, people who are recommending to change the shore life to sea life to the shore. Uh, one of them is uh, Julia. Uh, she is uh, working as uh, in Netherlands in crewing uh, in one management company uh, in crewing, and uh, I had some private chat with her also in Zoom, okay. and she gave me advice as how to change the life from sea to shore and what need to apply, such as LinkedIn or uh, to how to prepare CV and how to present myself to the company. The two more uh, people, it's uh, Denise, his channel after Seafarer on Instagram, and uh, yeah. I would say his, uh, I don't know, say... Fiance. Maybe, maybe we can say fiance. Yeah, Alexandra. It's Alexandra, and uh, I found first their account when they help with the question how to prepare the documents uh, out of the Ukraine. And uh, when I started following, there was so many posts how to change the life from sea to shore, and uh, actually I was quite detailed listening them and their advices and trying to find something. But I had some, I would say, doubts because I'm not so experienced as second officer or chief officer. If to be honest, I have only three contracts as the cadet and uh, one big contract as third officer on LPG nine months. And then I decided, okay, I will try. If I will not be successful, I will uh, change back to the sea, yes, and uh, I was also using your platform uh, to in improve my knowledge in stability of the vessel and some general knowledge, but I also have your, I would say, old videos, famous videos of Kifomate, which are all uh, universities still using, and I would say you're also popular not in Ukraine or post or some Russian speaker countries, for example, I had a colleague from Riga and he also knows you, so it's, I would say, some success. Thank you. Mind. Thank you for these uh, words. Very pleasant. And uh, I, I, I really am pleased that uh, yeah, my, let's say, forces, the things I did, uh, found uh, the users and I can apply this knowledge to build a career. And uh, it's, it's very interesting because uh, you made your decision on base of experience and uh, vision of our people, which you would say it's very rare. Normally people uh, try to do their own mistakes and then, <laughs> then maybe be sorry, apologize for them. And uh, later, I would say the one of stop uh, step on the transfer to the shore is a salary. When you become a chief engineer and the captain, then it's very difficult to transfer ashore because you get used to some income. You have family. Family also get used uh, to expenses. And then, you know, everybody say that in, in young, younger stage, earlier stages, it would be easier uh, to transfer. And well done. Well done. And I wish you all the best on your way. So, as I know, you were born and uh, grew up in um, Odessa, Ukraine, in the port city. And uh, why did you decide to become a seaman? Actually, if you because I don't have as many as my previous classmates, like uh, father captains or uh, some relatives in the sea. So, and in Odessa, we have so many maritime universities, colleges, academy, and uh, I just decided that, yeah, I want to try my, connect my life with the sea. And uh, yeah, it was actually a great experience and I'm so happy that whatever I saw in my life. And, uh, and I want to also to make clear uh, that, for example, I am not, was, uh, how to say it properly, that I was not afraid to be at sea. So it's not means that I didn't like to work at sea or I didn't like voyages. I just tried to, okay, I will try to go ashore. If I am successful, I will stay. And still I have all my SCCW documents valid. So if I will not like shore life in, if I would say, one year, I still have the all options to come back to the sea. It's not means that I am fully 
disagreed with my previous life so it's still applicable for me absolutely and absolutely i agree this is not one way ticket this is try this is attempt so it it might be good for you might be not by the way um, are you married do you have children no i am not married i am alone <laughs> yeah so single yeah and then uh yeah that's nice so you you actually decided and probably yes, actually will... in one side it is quite good due to i don't have i would say family or wife or children and uh, I am not assigned for I am flexible I would say that I can try any office whatever will be my company will advise me or to propose or other company propose for the moment okay what what did you graduate as a maritime education I was graduated as baker in the National University Odessa Maritime Academy and a master degree in Odessa National Maritime University. So who is studying in Odessa, he knows the difference. So it's a little bit... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you graduated as a master degree. And how many years did you spend at sea, let's say, when you started and when you, let's say, interrupted, not completed, not finished, but interrupted your uh, sea-going career? Okay, the, the most first contract was in 2018 on the container ship. Before I had some port practice in the famous Hajj Bay in Odessa, I believe yep. many people yep, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and the first contract was in 2018 in August. So I did two contracts as the cadet six months and uh, then I had contract as third officer nine months. And my career was postponed in August 2022. And then I just I was still uh, graduating as master. So I decided, okay, I will graduate as master. I I'm in Germany, so I have permission to stay for some time and I will try to ap apply for the some German shipping company. Actually, it was advice of my previous captain from LPG. He said, okay, Vlad, you're in Germany, in Hamburg, so many companies, just try. And I was just following his advice. Okay, Vlad, but I have also a question. Uh, was that easy to jump to shore job to short profession so you made a decision and you let's say based it on advices of experienced captains but how easy or difficult was this transfer yes to be honest the transfer was a little bit difficult uh, in general i applied for if to be honest 65 or 70 companies maybe 30 of them at least uh, say it famous email unfortunately or uh, our pleasure we are regret to inform that we will not take you or I was trying also to some fully German companies so there were so many excuses to take and uh, in general so I had only three invites for interview one for my actual occupation LPCQ officer one more for marine accounting manager in one company it's close to the shipping higher of higher and the uh, commercial part of the vessel and was third one but I didn't try it due to I already agreed for LPCQ office. So it was quite difficult and I uh, was using so many different links, websites for the search and uh, one of the main advices was uh, that I heard in Instagram from before mentioned uh, bloggers that to try to find in company which you know and where you want to work. And now I'm working in one company which I know as per LPG and LPG and LNG fleet in general. Yes, in my fleet I don't have so much LNG LPG, but I know this company is good and finally I'm working here. How difficult is to manage that uh, variety of fleet like LPG, offshore, bulk carriers? Okay, system is the same, yes, but specific is different. Specific, if to be honest, yes, as in LPCQ department and making deals with accident, each accident it uh, fully depends on the vessel. So one accident I had, it's LNG bunker vessel and this small small incident that the Azimut truster catched the mooring line. And problem that it's uh, we need to show for the owner how to prevent it. And uh, there was the same close incident three months ago and we need to show that it's two different accidents. So, and they're not related to each other, but both accidents about raster uh, stuck by mooring rope. And it's fully, mostly we have containers. There is usual false trips, false trips and uh, some personal injuries, but uh, still we have offshore vessels. Offshore vessels, it's totally different situation with DP control, loss of DP. And uh, I'm still a little bit confused how to 
understand them because for example i didn't work on the uh, dp vessels on the offshore vessels and uh, um, I am following the advices of my superintendents who work them because the fleet variety is so big and uh, accidents are fully different all the time. And uh, actually, I would say you need also to be aware and I kindly try to inform you that uh, in case of uh, emergency, yes, DPA will be informed and he will raise emergency team. So I am not in emergency team. I will be after team who will investigate this problem what happened, how to prevent this in future and how to prevent losses and uh, save life. So we are the department who are preparing the learning projects. And uh, in uh, emergency team, yes, there is professionals who knows how to assist the vessel in case of emergency. <laughs> it's very interesting. But um, I, I know what difficulties exactly you have is, uh, let's say, uh, when something happens, you need to find the root cause then corrective action and then pre preventive action to prevent it in the future. And then another incident or cause by the same reason. And then the, from the owner or whatever operator, charter side, it means the preventive action was not that effective. Yeah, because it happened again within your fleet, likely not on the same vessel. Yes, and about uh, DP, definitely uh, I will uh, give you a link of my close group DP meeting where you can find a lot of knowledge from our colleagues and also present from my side my book where you will also find basics about dynamic positioning and for sure for sure will understand then DP operators better. Thank you. It will be a good experience. Yeah that's that's from my side and then um, let's say a little about your past. Uh, your let's say, academy years. How was difficult or easy to study and was the process of education effective? Yes, if to be honest, in first I was a bachelor in National Maritime Academy and the uh, academy have a little bit different way of studying. I was in Maritime University, in that's Maritime University and Academy. Academy, it's uh, have full discipline, close, I would say, to army, but uh, it's not fully the army, but mostly it was some of the object was, yes, quite good and quite uh, experience for the, my maritime career. And it's like half military style. Yes, half academy. military yeah. styles, no long hair, no piercing, no no tattoo. Uniform. Yes, yeah. strict uniform, so we need to understand the difference. And uh, mostly, yeah, the basic of knowledge of the maritime was given by the academy and uh, their specific objects. And in general, for me, yes, it was not so difficult, but it, it requires some attention. So you cannot, like, for one, two months forget about the objects and then come back, okay, sorry, I had some problems and uh, now I'm trying to finish my second or third course. But in actual, if you are trying as much as possible to give attention to the objects, so it will, it will help you at the end, I would say, always. If okay, the, teachers... sub, the, the subjects, yeah, the subjects, uh, they are, um, let's say, were strict uh, to attend. And another question, uh, were they effective? So did you implement then the knowledge which you gained in the university and academy in your career? I would not say that I full of them I was using, but quite like uh, Colrec and Marine uh, maneuvering English for sure. I have to be honest, I had very good and professional teacher of English in academy for three courses. And I am thank you so much for this teacher for yeah, mostly I remember some objects are helped me a lot. But yeah, some of them not much like high mats. There was some high mats was not so. <laughs> useful in maritime and uh, also maritime experience that when I had two contracts as the cadet and I had some already acknowledged so I can share and I have idea of sailing and I was sharing to the, my teachers in university. Okay, what your feelings when you joined, let's say, not Hadji Bay, but your first uh, vessel with the international voyages? Uh, what did you feel? Uh, what maybe some gap of knowledge, what you would like to, let's say, know a little in advance. Yeah, whatever first contract is actually always a difficult contract because your first time in such marine environmental that you are out of the home, it's 
difficult physically, mentally, but still it was manageable and uh, there is a lot of knowledge for improvement which you have found that it's different from the university. Yes, you know the theoretical part, you know the call rec and the other rules, but still uh, a lot of knowledge for improvement. It's actually the practical part. And uh, the first watch, yeah, I like the first watch. It was quite experience for me. I was working on the container ship and uh, container ship always have the quick life. So 10 ports in one and a half months or more and uh, a lot of knowledge which are using in future. And uh, I would say when I was working on LPG decade, it was totally different situation. Yeah, LPG you have more specific cargo knowledge you require it, but uh, there is less sailing, less, uh, I would say, uh, using of call rack, less head-on situation, but on container ship, you are... First contract, I like, I like him a lot. There is a lot of knowledge which I get from there. Did you have some kind of um, situation, nearly incidents, or uh, when the relationships with the crew were under the tension? let's say, somebody related to you, not as per, let's say, working instructions? The accidents almost I didn't. Only when I was third officer in last contract, I had some small accident of fire in engine room that during uh, unmining engine room, the incinerator was in work. So it's created small fire from the main hatch, but it was extinguished in good time. Everything was as per drills in good action, in good order. How did, you, how did you learn on vessel? Did you have some kind of alarm on the bridge? It actually was no. my watch. Yes, I received the alarm. I received the alarm and I was a little bit shocked. Underway, yeah? Yeah, underway. I was underway. I called the captain and we have some kind of system and it's required to do not accept the alarm until captain will not come on, come up on the bridge. I informed him. I called the engine room and there was duty engineer, force engineer. And he uh, just gave me one word, like Ooh, something fire, and I was confused so much. And hopefully we had CCTV camera close to incinerator. And I saw by CCTV camera that somebody using extinguisher. So I said, okay, captain, force engineer using extinguisher. And he like, okay, alarm activated, uh, fire, fire. It's not a drill, it's not a drill. But in the same time, I was a little bit confused because as per usual drills, as we know, we are assembled on the master station. We are preparing uh, chief engineer or chief officer who is as per company chief, chief uh, fire, I would say, uh, fire chief. And in this time, chief, only... chief, chief leader, yeah, let's say, uh, the fire leader. Yeah. Fire leader and the engineer, engineering part, chief engineer, second engineer, third engineer, they had been missing. And I was confused for this. So whatever we, chief officer, give the command to prepare SCBA and fireman outfit. And when they entered, they found that already second engineer uh, was on standby button on the firefighting system. Electrical officer disconnected all cables and uh, switched off the incinerator. Chief engineer already also was informed and standby. Force engineer extinguished fire by extinguisher. So at the same time, it was not usual practice as per drill, but in the same time, the fire was immediately extinguished. So it was 50-50 and I was confused in this time. Yeah, you know, yeah, we are... Um let's say making the drill and scenarios and now you're actually in charge for this part in your company but uh, everybody says that uh, in the real emergency situation when people are under the shock they behave differently absolutely actually the the purpose of the drills uh, to make kind of behavior and habit uh, to act in certain way yeah, but the people, uh, you know, they go, oh, why, while we make gathering on the master station, then we will miss and, or lose the proper moment to extinguish and so on. But can you give me more details? Was that weather, nighttime and so on? So was it like, you know, we're doing drills in calm weather, daytime. How was that? I don't remember. It was on the way to the China for discharging LPG. It was for sure night. It was uh, 9 or 10 o'clock of uh, night time my watch it was calm weather uh, actually it was also hopefully uh, not so difficult from navigational south it was open sea no many head-on situation crossing situation so it was quite from the navigational side it was quite calm and i had also a second third officer he was in charge of the bridge and i was preparing uh, a cba and fireman outfit in this time i would say it was okay. stressful but not like super stressful 
Did you work with the mixed crew all the time or you worked with like um, nationality or one nationality Ukrainian crew? Uh, first contract as the cadet, I had full mix crew on container ship. There was Myanmarian guys, uh, Romanian, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian, Ethiopian, third engineer, Latvian. It was fully mix. Of even second uh, Chinese second engineer. So there was fully mix, and then I switched company to the LPG one company, shipping company, and there was uh, Indian office in Kuala Lumpur with mostly Indian crew. So, but I didn't never had like some conflicts with Indian, or even I am not trying to judge some nationality as per one person or per two persons. So mostly I was working with Indian last contracts, and uh, like tw- ah no, last contract was I had three trainee from Japan provided by owner maybe 20 Indian and uh, three Ukrainian, one Sri Lanka. So we had full mix. Mostly I was more working more even with different nationalities than with uh, our nationalities, Ukrainian or Russian speakers nationalities. Okay, Vlad, uh, regarding the, your short job, uh, how much time you already in this, on this position? Uh, I started from 3rd April. So actually exactly today, three months as LPCQ officer and uh, actually tomorrow I have briefing. Usually company when you're starting as uh, new new joiner, they have briefings and uh, I had one briefing in first month with my team leader and the HR department and tomorrow I have with uh, operational manager and uh, managing director. So tomorrow I have this, I would say this director some kind of meeting and uh, in this time I will not have team leader, I will be more, I would say, who will give some information to the director, what is space for improvement or what I like in company or what I didn't like. Great experience and uh, great, great approach, I would say proper. And uh, being fresh uh, in the, let's say, in this occupation, what would you say is the, let's say, short-based job? Is uh, something as seamen imagine or expecting this or like you know maybe they they think that people mostly like oriented on statistics and so on and uh, like see when we are doing the job because like frontliner and so on so like we really let's say transfer the cargo and so on and then uh, actually the office is on the shoulder of seamen was that impression and how is now actually i found so many times and i also before had the same opinion that I didn't understand what are actually is going on in office. So I was uh, had some kind of opinion from my previous chief engineer that once he said that they only paper makers and uh, only in charge of creating new checklist. But now when I'm working as three months in office, I understood for what we are doing this. So for example, we are managing company and we want to try to apply for new tender for some other vessels. For example, we want to find more offshore vessels. But to apply for the offshore vessels, you need, or for new tanker vessels, you need to pass TMSA or OVMSA. TMSA is tanker management self-assessment, who is covered by Shell and uh, OVMSA, it's offshore vessel management self-assessment, also covered by Shell. So office are preparing, also, office also have the all audits, DNV, classification society and flex uh, uh, inspections. So the office preparing themselves and preparing the vessel for the audits. So in this case, we have, for example, my company have uh, OVMSA in couple of weeks, and now we quite actively preparing ourselves to pass this audit. So if we will pass, we will be, I would say, we will have permission for, for tendering the new vessel. Because usually, for example, Sifarer after the couple of years start complaining that company not did not found new vessels and we have still all scrap vessels which are not usable for the shipping and then finally we will sell them and the um, company will be not workable. So no more space for the Siemens. So the company also want to improve and to increase the number of vessels under the management. So due to this, we are trying to follow all standards and uh, all different kind of publications to bring more vessels to the our fleets to be one of the biggest shipping company, management shipping company. Yes. So a lot of job. <laughs> and uh, maybe actually the company also extend the number of personnel where actually the young uh, guys are needed with the, let's say, fresh 
mind and a new approach to the system. Yeah. yeah, it's quite often that, for example, we are applying for the management and owner of the company required, okay, you, this vessel will be under your manager, but we require your sub office close to our country. So, for example, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia and you're applying for the there, some kind of vessels or offshore vessels, they will ask uh, to create office close to, the, to their country. So we will also search the people who will work in this office and uh, in this country. So the company also growing slowly, slowly and trying to be bigger than before. So this is competition. Yeah, this is a business. And uh, let's say, would say if it's a, let's say, transparent or at least fair business, why not? Yeah, so nobody is making some kind of black blackmailing and so on. Additionally, for example, also seafarers asking why is a vessel so active on the marine environmental or a safe way to avoid the accidents. And for example, we have famous now ride ship program, which also yeah. following my company and uh, I found for cargo fleet. Yes, yeah. it's so interesting that, for example, if your vessel are had less accidents, they have big score. It means that the uh, future uh, charter will be very interested in this vessel. But in this t- same time, you have low score of friendly environmental and don't remember the proper name of the score. So, and company will say, okay, you have better environmental, you don't have scrubber, you don't have BWTS in this case, so sorry, you are not applicable for our charter. So, and also company trying to keep as much as possible the right ship bigger to apply for the new management, uh, for the new vessels. So, and due to this company trying to actual vessels, what we have to increase the safety and quality of the vessel. Due to this, there is many checklists, many reports and uh, other stuff, I would say. How many people are responsible for uh, final um, maintaining of KPI? I uh, know this is actually a system, yeah? But who is observing? I would say on basis of my experience in my company, uh, team leader of each department uh, who is mostly making deal with fleets. So it's uh, MSI Marine Superintendents, uh, then manager of the superintendents as per fleet. Additionally, for example, in my case, director, uh, managing director, he also monitoring the right ship and whatever he don't like, he will directly will inform the leaders of the fleets and uh, including my department, he will speak to LPCQ, the partner will say, okay, our right ship are like little bit less and I was want improvement that we will apply for new vessels. So actually, but right ship is quite interesting problem. For example, as the, I heard, uh, you also have limited permission to log in. So there is some kind of a credits and if you're logging in like quite often, your credits become less and less and to apply for new credits, you need to pay something in that way. So it's quite interesting program. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't have experience with this much because mostly oriented on offshore fleet. Yeah, but I, I, I know this some challenging, let's say, system. Okay, uh, so you already three months in this position. How is the feeling? You still believe that your decision was correct, at least on this stage? Yes, on this stage, I found actually quite interesting to, yes, you need to understand it's, I would say, sitting job, you're in office, but there is so many, I would say, actions to going in the company, you're trying to apply for the new vessel, still I'm working also in accident department. So time to time I have so different and interesting accident, not fatal, but still shocked or even funny shocked and um, actually I like also need to understand so many people who worked uh, for example in Ukrainian office they they have opinion that it will be same as Ukrainian office but European office like Netherlands Germany Cyprus I believe that uh, there is different office so the company trying to be as much as closer to you. So if you have some kind of problem with your apartment, with your permission to stay in the country, you can ask HR department, they will help you directly. If also in my company, time to time, I have some kind of events, which are like, makes happy the office workers. So I had some kind of four days of quick break. It's for example, yoga from nine to 10, uh, quick uh, exercises from, 10 to 12, then, for example, I participated in two uh, 
uh, walking uh, guide of Gamburg for two hours. So there was a nominated guider and he was uh, showing the Gamburg from the historical parts. Also, for example, my company providing some kind of benefits and you can always choose the what kind of benefits. And uh, one of them I choose, it's learning of Deutsch, of learning of the German. So I'm trying to learn one more language, second, the public transportation. Yeah, in Germany, there is a lot of public transport and the, I would say the tree of the public transport is big. You can reach, I'm living, to be honest, 25 kilometers away from the office, but it spent me only 50 minutes to reach the office and it's not so much, I would say, with such distance. Also, there are so many different, uh, I would say, benefits. You can ask to pay for your gym, for your hobbies, or even to apply for some kind of bicycle uh, renting uh, or uh, additional medical insurance for your kids. So the company trying as much as possible to give you something that you will stay with them. And whatever you, as long as in the company, there will be more benefits to you. So one of them I have uh, a little bit later. Uh, I can work 10 days uh, from anywhere. So it's, and it's so many often in different countries that you can work from home. So after the COVID, they decided to make it on the basic that people can work uh, at least seven or more. Than remotely. Yes, remotely. Mm -hmm. So it's called wrong from anywhere. This is your occupation or similar, maybe not in your position right now, maybe being an assistant or junior, but maybe on the higher rank of, uh, let's say, uh, safety department. Uh, uh, is it, uh, let's say, necessary then later to visit vessels, you know, like the KPI of visiting vessels, which are calling Hamburg or, for example, even to have some trips uh, to the place, to ports where the vessel is expecting to be? Yes, actually, uh, as per uh, company requirements, yes, we have that uh, vessel need to be inspected internally from uh, MSI and LPCQ department once per year. And mostly we have sub company in other country which are making this. So it's uh, mostly in the Asia. So it's a little bit expensive to fly from Gamburg to the Asia for the whole vessel. But whatever is any of our vessel attending the Gamburg or Euro, Belgium, Bremen or uh, Spain, the Marine superintendent or LPCQ superintendent trying to visit the vessel at least once time per year to check whatever it's happened and how to increase the safety on the vessel. Also, we have some kind of good practice after uh, some kind of deficiencies or uh, some accidents to visit the vessel for the, it's actually LPSQ department, to check the investigation, how it was and for what it was like how to prevent it and to give more clarification for the owner. Ah, and often can be happened, for example, I will not say the name, but we have the owner and he directly requested, okay, our vessel going to USA and uh, in our opinion, port of control will come on board and we want to have a representative of uh, office on board of our vessel. So company directly requested the marine superintendent or any superintendent from the company to visit the vessel and to be ready for any kind of inspection of third party. Super, super. So not, not only sitting in the office. Yes, yes. And so from the high of your position and career, what would you advise, maybe three things um, to younger generation, let's say to the person who is uh, in the process of education now and uh, maybe he's studying well, but you would say like you point him on some soft skills or something else to pay attention at what would be useful in marine or maybe in future in a shore-based profession. First of all, maybe um, I will recommend uh, it's like in general to apply for and make and create LinkedIn account, whatever your position, the cadet, third officer, or you're planning to go to shore because I believe in my opinion it's, uh, still good page and a good resource for uh, to show yourself to represent yourself in the company it will be additional remark or additional plus to your list that you have linkedin and you are interested in shipping that you all the time monitoring some news and company will be always interested in this second time what i can recommend yes uh, to be don't be afraid to try so i actually was afraid to try to 
Actually, if to be honest, when I asked help of Yulia, it was in November and only after two months I decided, okay, I will follow her advices, I will create LinkedIn, I will create CV and um, I didn't regret it. Yes, I had so many refuses from different company, but I was still keeping try, interested and uh, do not give up. So I was trying as much as possible. Okay, I will, if I will, I will try, I will try. If I will fail, it's okay, I have the experience. Yes, and third one, uh, in soft skills, uh, I believe to be more actually the people in the office and the DC to be as much as possible pleasure and to be applied for the people to be uh, the head of the comp head of the not a team but to be heart of the team to and always to be active. One what I take from the cadets times that I always trying to ask as much as possible. So whatever I join at the LPCQ department, I was annoying everybody. I was annoying my LPCU, LPCU other officers, my superintendents, my team leader. I was asking a lot, every questions. I was, even I understood, okay, it's too much for me. It's not my cup of tea. It's something, it's only like not related to me, but I will ask what happened, why it's happened. And uh, as much as possible, I will try to be, be active. So I will not sit somewhere in corner and keep silence until will somebody will give me the job. So I was the same as the cadet, same as third officer, and I'm still same as LPSQ officer because there is still a lot of space for improvement, for learning, and uh, I'm interested in this and company appreciates this. I would say directly my team leader said at the first meeting, monthly meeting, he said, okay, I like Vlad that you are always keep your nose everywhere, whatever you can. Yes, this advice. Thank you. And um, as a conclusion, yeah, be proactive person. Yeah, and then from your side, you are a perfect example when you combined your education and then experience and let's say see going career and build from this based on this something else in the future. So many people, they think that uh, to go somewhere, you need to cut the past, but you are a very good example when you can use all your past and actually it is a benefit for the office job that you actually have been on the vessel, you have this background and uh, you can use it uh, for the purpose of the company and management. As a, let's say, small tradition, we, I ask um, a very simple question. How often as per LSA code the should be a drill of David launch life raft. Three months, every three months, David. And then we will leave on this answer. And if somebody think against this, you can please write in the comment. And uh, anyway, please, uh, if you like this uh, interview and the, the way we are doing this, you see how we do? that you are near next to the Hamburg and you still have a daylight. I am in Abu Dhabi now and I have two hours plus and I believe not in the time zone properly. So I have absolutely dark already and we're still uh, doing this for purpose of uh, our followers. So then please push the like button and subscribe in this channel and push the bell if you want to be notifying about the new videos on this channel. And thank you very much Vlad uh, for everything you 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 told us you shared us and that you found the time in your schedule and i am absolutely sure that after the day job yeah after the day in the office you are quite tired and tomorrow you have a very let's say important day and i wish you and hope everything will go smooth and uh, as per what you expect and maybe even better okay thank you so much for your interview for your invite Actually, I didn't expect it initially. Such pleasure. Thank you a lot of, for the private interview. The pleasure is mine and thank you very much and all the best in your career. Keep in touch. Thank you. Keep in touch.